So in this uh, week's work on Hydra in a Box, um, we put in a lot of work around the multi-tenancy features. Um, early on in the project, we started doing uh, multi-tenant databases using a gem called Apartment. Um, and we've now extended that to do multi-tenant Solar and Fedora, um, which I will demonstrate here today. Um, I've set up two different uh, tenants in, in my local development instance, um, tenant X and tenant Y. Um, we can see uh, in this edit screen um, that they're pointing at two different solar endpoints, um, a, a solar collection called X, and they're using a Fedora endpoint um, with a base path starting with X. If we look at uh, Y, um, it'll be the same deal, only a solar collection called Y and a base path called Y. Um, and this effectively isolates our different tenants um, so they can only see uh, their data uh, and no one else's. Um, in, in this X um, tenant, uh, we have a work um, that I guess I won't go to that page. I, I thought we fixed this, Mike. Yeah, this is what I was seeing too, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Sorry, I have some dirty data in here uh, from earlier. Anyway, we, we have uh, a, a work um, this page, and in Y, we can create works uh, just like you can in, in Sophia. Um, and I will upload a file. Deposit unit. Um, and after this is done, uh, we, we have our working Y. If, if tenant X tries to access that, um, we should get a lovely error. Uh, because I'm in development mode, it will probably look very nasty. Um, uh, but at least they're not able to access data they shouldn't even know exists. Um, so this is pretty exciting for a kind of uh, centralized service uh, like uh, we're, we're thinking about building um, and should set us uh, up to, to do some really cool things um, with load balancing uh, in, in Amazon Web Services real soon. Um, a couple other things we worked on this week um, were around uh, kind of super administration features. Um, you can see at the top of this window is a new kind of site status bar um, called Peak uh, that lets us see what's going on in the application, um, including things like uh, database queries and, and load times, um, page uh, uh, load times, the Redis status. Um, the other thing is this new features tab lets us toggle on and off features dynamically. Um, and even per tenant, I believe, because this gets stored in the database. Um, so we can decide uh, to turn on all the shiny things um, for, for everyone. So that's it for me. Over to you, Mike. OK, thank you, Chris. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, can you see my screen? I hope so. If yep, someone could. could. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show is a sneak preview of some work that we have in the in the Hydra in a Box application. So you've seen the settings or configuration user interface before that administrators see when they log into their Hydra in a Box tenant application. A new feature that we're working on. It's not quite done yet but you'll see there are now two tabs under settings. One is for labels, which you saw before, and one is for content blocks. So previously in Sophia, there were editable content blocks in the user interface, and, and they sometimes render in a way that is unpleasant if you're an administrator of a site. So rather than having them be editable in place, we make them editable in the settings UI and just displayable wherever they are. So as a demonstration of this, 
I'm going to add, um, let's see, I'll add uh, some marketing text here. And I save it. I would save it. I already have this done. So I'm just going to show you what it would do. And then I click over to the home page. And then you'll see that the marketing text right there. Then if I go to back to sites and wipe it out, this whole block, even the background, will be gone. So that is one of the things that we're working on right now. I want to show some improvements that we've made to the Sophia user interface, which are aligned with the work that the Sophia user interface working group has done. Um, so the first thing is to show the collection show page. This is very close to the wireframes that the UI working group came up with. Um, you'll see that there's slideshow view. This is kind of a small image. I'll choose better content next time. But you can see a little slideshow view. You can search within a collection. And you'll see the kind of aggregate statistics for the collection up here, the number of items, the size of the collection, and who created it. I'll also show some UI tweaks we made to the work show page. This was a major focus of activity for us this week and also a little bit of last, and we're just about done with this work. The one thing I wanted to show with this work is that there used to be, for the longest time, a default thumbnail that you'd get with works. It looks kind of like this blue icon in the lower left-hand corner. You'll only see it in this context now, and you'll never see it as a gigantic blue icon. Now we just show some text and say there's no preview until a person chooses a, uh, a thumbnail or a representative media that makes sense. We got we got this no preview here because I uploaded a file that that our derivative generation process didn't know how to create a thumbnail of. And then the last thing I wanted to show is some other changes that we made to the work show page. So first of all, you'll notice um, up to the left, you'll see we now are reflecting collection memberships here. And to the right, you'll see we now have a last modified date above the thumbnail and the social media button so that you can share a link to this content in multiple social networks. And then the last thing I'll show is that there used to be a bunch of action buttons for all the actions you can take on an item. And because the number of actions has, has grown and will probably continue to grow, we now made those drop downs. And I'd like to show you one of the new drop downs, and that's single use links. So, this is a feature that is in Sophia 6, and um, we've now gotten enabled, re enabled in Sophia 7. So, what happened was this is a private file and a private work, and I might want to share this with my colleague at a different university who can't get access to this otherwise. So, the single use link creates a link that works once. Uh, say my clipboard, if I send them that link, they go to a special landing page where the only thing they can do is look at what I've sent them a link to. So that is it for me, other than to say that we've also been doing a bunch of refactoring work. We've released a couple new releases of curation concerns, and some of that work is, is hard to demonstrate, but it's equally valuable. I just wanted to make sure that y'all knew that this was going on. So that is it for the demo. Does anyone else have anything they wanted to demonstrate or talk about for this week's demo? Okay, that concludes this week's demo. Thank you.